DVB-T is an abbreviation for Digital Video Broadcasting a Euro Terrestrial. It is the DVB European-based consortium standard for the broadcast transmission of digital terrestrial television that was first published in 1997 and first broadcast in the UK in 1998. This system transmits compressed digital audio, digital video and other data in an MPEG transport stream, using coded orthogonal frequency division multiplexing modulation. Basics Rather than carrying one data carrier on a single radio frequency channel, COFDM works by splitting the digital data stream into a large number of slower digital streams, each of which digitally modulate a set of closely spaced adjacent subcarrier frequencies. In the case of DVB-T, there are two choices for the number of carriers known as 2K mode or 8K mode. These are actually 1,705 or 6,817 subcarriers that are approximately 4 kHz or 1 kHz apart. DVB-T offers three different modulation schemes. DVB-T has been adopted or proposed for digital television broadcasting by many countries, using mainly VHF 7 MHz and UHF 8 MHz channels whereas Taiwan, Colombia, Panama. Trinidad and Tobago and the Philippines use 6 MHz channels. Examples include the UK's Freeview. The DVB-T standard is published as EN 300-744, Framing Structure, Channel Coding and Modulation for Digital Terrestrial Television. This is available from the ETSI website, as is ETSITS 101-154. Specification for the use of video and audio coding and broadcasting applications based on the MPEG-2 transport stream, which gives details of the DVB use of source coding methods for MPEG-2 and, more recently, H264 slash MPEG-4 AVC as well as audio encoding systems. Many countries that have adopted DVB-T have published standards for their implementation. These include the D-Book in the UK, the Italian DGTVI, the ETSIE book and Scandivia Nordic. DVB-T has been further developed into newer standards such as DVB-H, which was a commercial failure and is no longer in operation, and DVB-T2, which was initially finalized in August 2011. DVB-T as a digital transmission delivers data in a series of discrete blocks at the symbol rate. DVB-T is a COFDM transmission technique which includes the use of a guard interval. It allows the receiver to cope with strong multipath situations. Within a geographical area, DVB-T also allows single frequency network operation, where two or more transmitters carrying the same data operate on the same frequency. In such cases the signals from each transmitter and the SFN needs to be accurately time aligned which is done by sync information in the stream and timing at each transmitter reference to GPS. The length of the guard interval can be chosen. It is a trade-off between data rate and SFN capability. The longer the guard interval the larger is the potential SFN area without creating inter-symbol interference. It is possible to operate SFNs which do not fulfill the guard interval condition if the self-interference is properly planned and monitored. Technical description of a DVB-T transmitter. With reference to the figure, a short description of the signal processing blocks follows. Source coding and MPEG-2 multiplexing, compressed video, compressed audio, and data streams are multiplexed into MPEG program streams. One or more MPEG PSs are joined together into an MPEG transport stream. This is the basic digital stream which is being transmitted and received by TV sets or home set-top boxes. Allowed bit rates for the transported data depend on a number of coding and modulation parameters, it can range from about 5 to about 32 bit s. Splitter, two different MPEG TSs can be transmitted at the same time, using a technique called hierarchical transmission. It may be used to transmit. For example a standard definition SDTV signal and a high definition HDTV signal on the same carrier. Generally, the SDTV signal is more robust than the HDTV one. At the receiver, depending on the quality of the received signal, the STB may be able to decode the HDTV stream or, if signal strength lacks, it can switch to the SDTV one. 
MUX adaptation and energy dispersal, the MPEGTS is identified as a sequence of data packets, of fixed length. With a technique called energy dispersal, the byte sequence is decorrelated. External encoder, a first level of error correction is applied to the transmitted data, using a non-binary block code, a read solomon RS code, allowing the correction of up to a maximum of 8 ROM bytes for each 188-byte packet. External interleaver, convolutional interleaving is used to rearrange the transmitted data sequence, in such a way that it becomes more rugged to long sequences of errors. Internal encoder, a second level of error correction is given by a punctured convolutional code, which is often denoted in STB's menus as FEC. There are five valid coding rates, one half, two thirds, three quarters, five slash six, and seven slash eight. Internal interleaver, data sequence is rearranged again, aiming to reduce the influence of burst errors. This time, a block interleaving technique is adopted, with a pseudo-random assignment scheme. Mapper, the digital bit sequence is mapped into a baseband modulated sequence of complex symbols. There are three valid modulation schemes, QPSK, 16QAM, 64QAM. Frame adaptation, the complex symbols are grouped in blocks of constant length. A frame is generated, 68 blocks long, and a super frame is built by four frames. Pilot and TPS signals, in order to simplify the reception of the signal being transmitted on the terrestrial radio channel, additional signals are inserted in each block. Pilot signals are used during the synchronization and equalization phase, while TPS signals send the parameters of the transmitted signal and to unequivocally identify the transmission cell. The receiver must be able to synchronize, equalize and decode the signal to gain access to the information held by the TPS pilots. Thus, the receiver must know this information beforehand, and the TPS data is only used in special cases, such as changes in the parameters, resynchronizations, etc. OFDM modulation, the sequence of blocks is modulated according to the OFDM technique, using 1705 or 6817 carriers. Increasing the number of carriers does not modify the payload bit rate, which remains constant. Guard interval insertion, to decrease receiver complexity, every OFDM block is extended, copying in front of it its own end. The width of such guard interval can be 1 32, 1 16, 1 8, or one quarter that of the original block length. Cyclic prefix is required to operate single frequency networks, where there may exist an ineliminable interference coming from several sites transmitting the same program on the same carrier frequency. DAC in front end, the digital signal is transformed into an analog signal, with a digital to analog converter, and then modulated to radio frequency by the RF front end. The occupied bandwidth is designed to accommodate each single dVBT signal into 5, 6, 7, or 8 MHz wide channels. The baseband sample rate provided at the DAC input depends on the channel bandwidth. It is samples S, where is the channel bandwidth expressed in Hertz? Technical description of the receiver, the receiving STB adopts techniques which are dual to those ones used in the transmission. Front end and ADC, the analog RF signal is converted to baseband and transformed into a digital signal, using an analog to digital converter. Time and frequency synchronization, the digital base band signal is searched to identify the beginning of frames and blocks. Any problems with the frequency of the components of the signal are corrected too. The property that the guard interval at the end of the symbol is placed also at the beginning is exploited to find the beginning of a new OFDM symbol. On the other hand, continual pilots determine the frequency offset suffered by the signal. This frequency offset might have been caused by Doppler effect, inaccuracies in either the transmitter or receiver clock, and so on. Generally, synchronization is done in two steps either before or after the FFT, in such way to resolve both coarse and fine frequency timing errors. Pre-FFT steps involve the use of sliding correlation on the received time signal, 
whereas post-FFT steps use correlation between the frequency signal and the pilot carrier's sequence. Guard interval disposal, the cyclic prefix is removed. OFDMD modulation, this is achieved with an FFT. Frequency equalization, the pilot signals are used to estimate the channel transfer function every three subcarriers. The CTF is derived in the remaining subcarriers via interpolation. The CTF is then used to equalize the received data in each subcarrier, generally using a zero forcing method. The CTF is also used to weigh the reliability of the demap data when they are provided to the Viterbi decoder. Demapping since there are gray encoded QAM constellations, demapping is done in a soft way using nonlinear laws that demap each bit in the received symbol to a more or less reliable fuzzy value between minus 1 and plus 1. Internal data leaving, internal decoding, uses the Viterbi algorithm, with a traceback length larger than that generally used for the basic one half rate code, due to the presence of punctured bits. External data leaving, external decoding, MUX adaptation, MPEG2 demultiplexing and source decoding, countries and territories using DVBT. See also, ATSC, Digital Audio Broadcasting, Digital Video Broadcasting, DTV Channel Protection Ratios, DVB over IP, DVBT2, Digital Terrestrial Television, DMBT, Digital Multimedia Broadcast Terrestrial, Interactive Television, ISDB, Integrated Services Digital Broadcasting, ISDBT International. Multimedia Home Platform, OFDM System Comparison Table, Personal Video Recorder, Spectral Efficiency Comparison Table, Teletext, Notes. References, ETSI Standard, EN 300-744 v1.5.1, Digital Video Broadcasting. Framing Structure. Channel Coding and Modulation for Digital Terrestrial Television, available at DTSI Publications Download Area, External Links, Website of the DVB Project, GTAG Website, OFCOMDTT Future, BBC, Digital, Homepage, DVB-T Broadcasting with Linux.